If you worship the flag of the state, you are worshiping the state. Read by Shane Radliff, the author, originally published on May 8, 2015, at libertyunderattack.com. Let me start by saying I despise most everything that people my age do on a daily basis. All of these idiotic, mindless challenges, trends, and the daily dipshit hour really show me how well the indoctrination and propaganda programs have worked. Well, the new challenge is here, and it's surely bringing out the status in full force. For those who have their head buried in the sand, someone started a challenge of stomping on the American flag for some unknown, probably mentally inept reason. It is my opinion that the people propagating this challenge are dumbed down lemmings. It is also my opinion that those who are condemning this challenge for their love of America and freedom are socially and mentally incapable of breaking through this detrimental phenomenon known as collective patriotism. Anyone who studies history in the current state of America today would surely reject that flag with every ounce of their being. Today, I will show you what that American flag truly stands for, and it's not freedom. The current United States flag we see today was adopted in 1960. That was, uh, was long after the anti-freedom communist seed was planted in America. To support my assertion, I'll provide a few examples. The Federal Reserve Act in 1913, which gave the United States a central bank, is number five in the ten planks of the Communist Manifesto. After signing the Federal Reserve Act, Wood Woodrow Wilson said, uh, understood the gravity of the mistake that he made just a few years earlier. He said, quote, a great industrial nation is controlled by a system of credit. Our system of credit is concentrated. The growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. We have come to be one of the worst ruled, one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in the civilized world. No longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and the vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and dress of small groups of dominant men, end quote. The next important example is the graduated income tax, uh, number two of the Communist Manifesto. That is the 16th Amendment to the Constitution. For the sake of time, I will begin with the first introduction of the graduated income tax after the creation of the Federal Reserve. The Revenue Act of 1916 redistributed tax burdens uh, up the income scale and also increased taxes for all tax brackets. The most well-known communist revolutionaries also mentioned the importance of the graduated income tax in the communizing of a country. The next crucial example is number six on the Communist Manifesto, which is the centralization of all means of communication and transportation in the hands of the state. That would be the creation of the Federal Communications Commission by the Communications Act of 1934. Since 1934, the FCC has been regulating interstate, co inter interstate communications by radio, television, and cable in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and U.S. territories. In regards to the centralization of all means of transportation before this current American flag was adopted, the now defunct regulatory agency known as the Interstate Commerce Commission is worth a mention. There are some other things worth a mention in passing to further assert my position. First off, socialist insecurity, or social security as, they, as the, state, the state likes to call it. Uh, socialist insecurity was and is one of the most successful Ponzi schemes. Most folks in their 30s and younger should have realized by now that they have been paying into a retirement program that they will not see a single penny of. Next, the declared state of emergency in 1933, which is discussed in Senate Report 93-549 in 1973. Again, that's Senate Report 93-549. Quote, since March 9, 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. In fact, there are now in effect four presidentially proclaimed states of national emergency. In addition to the national emergency declared by President Roosevelt in 1933, there are also the national, national emergency proclaimed by President Truman on December 16, 1950, during the Korean conflict, and the states of national emergency declared by President Nixon on March 23, 1970, and August 15, 1971. End quote. The even greater revelation 
is in the third paragraph of this Senate report. Quote, under the powers delegated by these statutes, the president may seize property, organize and control means of production, seize commodities, assign military forces abroad, institute martial law, seize and control all transportation and communications, regulate the operation of private enterprise, restrict travel, and in a plethora of, a, of particular ways, control the lives of all American citizens. <clears throat> No currently living American has ever been free. Those of you who claim that I am free or America is a free country are surely referring to the fallacious definition of freedom, which is that as long as you can party and watch the Bears game, the government can tax, ban, or regulate every other aspect of your life, and you could give a damn less. The ideals and principles of this current American flag, um, the ideas and principles that this current American flag was adopted into are completely immoral, unethical, and anti-freedom. The American flag that so many blindly worship today is corrupted with the ideas of imperialism and communistic ideology. It does not represent freedom in any way, shape, or form. Now, I'm not personally offended when people stomp on the American flag, burn it, let it drag on the ground, etc., etc. Why? Because I don't worship a flag. Blind patriotism, flag-waving is now a tool of the tyrants, and they will always seize the opportunity to gain more control, which always result in a greater reduction of your freedom. The fact that so many are so deeply offended by someone stomping on a sewn piece of fabric should show you how dire of a situation we are in. Now, I wouldn't partake in those actions, but the flag I fly behind me in every broadcast of Liberty Under Attack radio is not the tainted American flag. It is the Gadsden flag. We all need to look into the mirror and get our priorities straight. If you're going to take action to condemn people for taking these actions, but you won't take any further action for freedom, then you are a hypocrite and, again, a victim of collective patriotism. If you care about freedom, be about it. You've just heard, if you worship the flag of the state, you are worshiping the state. Read by Shane Radliff, the author, available at libertyunderattack.com.